ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله We've now reached the chapter Babun min al-shirk an yastaghitha bi ghayri Allah aw yad'a ghayra the chapter regarding that it is from shirk to call upon others making dua upon others seeking that they help you and assist you to others besides Allah So here the Sheikh says min al-shirk meaning one of the types of shirk one of the types of shirk is that you call upon others besides Allah asking them to help you in times of difficulty just like some people they do they go to the graveyards and they make dua to the people who are dead in the graves asking them help us we're in trouble answer our dua so asking others besides Allah to aid you and to help you and to remove some difficulty which has overcome you asking from other than Allah to have some difficulty removed from you which has overcome you so what's the difference between this chapter and the previous chapter the previous chapter was talking about al istiadha that is seeking aid and assistance and protection from others besides Allah before some evil has actually occurred when those people used to go to the valleys they used to seek the protection of the leader of the jinn before they actually went in so nothing wrong had happened yet but in advance they were seeking protection before any evil comes to them here the difference is in this chapter when some evil has come to you some evil has overcome you then you make the dua and you seek the aid the assistance for that evil to be removed from you and if you do that to others besides Allah asking others to help you and to assist you to remove this evil from you calling upon others making dua upon others then that is considered an act of shirk however is it permissible to ask other people to help you to remove some difficulty or not here the sheikh will explain al istighathatu bil makhluq ala qismain asking other people then there are two instances two types al qism al awwal al istighathatu bil makhluq fi ma la yaqdiru alayhi illa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa hadhihi hiya al shirk al akbar li annaha sarf lil ibadati li ghayri allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you seek aid and help and assistance from others in creation in an affair or in something a matter that is outside of their capability then this is shirk this is a major shirk for example what would be an example of asking someone in creation to aid you to help you to remove some problem that you have where they are not able to remove that problem There are various things that the people they do various things that the people they go to the as they call the peer the awliya as they say they go to them in times of difficulty in times of hardship and they say make dua for us wipe on us remove the difficulty that we're in we're in financial problems we're in this we're in that we can't have a child so they go to this righteous man as they claim the peer the wali of Allah as they claim they say we've been trying for 20 years we can't have a child so then this man he does the wiping and whatever now when they go to this man and they seek the aid and assistance for this problem is this man able to give someone a child can he create a child for someone or is that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that is from Allah so seeking aid and assistance from somebody and giving you a child for example because you can't have children that's outside the capability of us so you making that request from someone going to seek this help going to seek this aid from somebody in creation making this application to them that is a shirk 
Because now you're asking something which the person has no ability in. This is only from the actions of Allah. So now by you associating these actions of Allah to people, thinking these people will be able to remove this difficulty from you, or remove this harm from you, when only Allah can do that, you are committing an act of shirk. However, if you ask somebody in creation to aid you or to assist you or to remove some difficulty from you in something which they are able to help you in, then that is permissible. That is permissible. What's an example of that? Going, and it, huh? going to a doctor. Things like that. For example, now you're walking down the street. And there's a group of people who are going to attack you. So you shout out to the brothers who are just there going the other way. You shout to them, you say, come back. You call for their help. You call for their aid and their assistance. Because you can see someone's coming to you with a knife. Now these brothers, they can help you. There's a group of them, they can come and all of you can stop this attack. So now that's asking the aid and the assistance to help remove this harm and this difficulty which is coming or which maybe already overcame you, maybe the person is already attacking you now. He's attacking you, so you shout out to the brothers who are on the other side of the road, they can hear you, you shout out to them to come. Now they can come and aid you and help you, it's within their ability. That's permissible. That's not calling upon others besides Allah to help you and to aid you, that's permissible. They are there, they can hear you, they can come, they can aid you, and that's the condition. If you are asking somebody in creation to aid you and help you in an affair, then it must be something which is within their ability. It can't be something which only Allah can do, like giving a child to someone. That is within the control of Allah alone. So it must be something that creation is able to do. On top of that, it must be that the person or people who you are asking, they can hear you, they are present and they can hear you. So for example now, in that same situation, if you are being attacked in the street, in some deserted place by yourself, there's nobody there. You're miles away in the countryside somewhere. Now if you're getting attacked, is there any point shouting out to the brothers? Because nobody can hear you, they can't assist you, nothing. And that would therefore be wrong for you to do that then. That would be an action where you are now seeking aid and assistance in the incorrect way. It's like what some of the Sufis do. When they are in trouble, they will call out to their Shaykh. Shaykh, we are in trouble, whatever. They call out to their Shaykh. And their Shaykh might be in another country somewhere. Like what they used to do with Nazim. Shaykh Nazim as they call him. That misguided individual. His followers might do things like that. Or those types of scenarios, those types of people. That's the kind of thing some of these types of people believe in. They will call out to their Shaykh. Even the Shaykh might be thousands of miles away in another country. They will call out to him in times of difficulty. Someone's attacking them, they'll call out to the name of their sheikh. As if he's going to hear them from thousands of miles away and help them and stop this. So that is impermissible. In creation, if you're going to ask for this aid, ask for this assistance, ask for the help, then it must be somebody who is there, who is present, who can hear you, who has the ability to help you. Ask for somebody who is absent, who can't even hear you, or he doesn't have the ability to help you then that is not correct to call upon them. And that's why the shaykh says here, فَالِاسْتِغَاثَةُ بِالْمَخْلُوقِ فِي مَا لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ So asking from the people in that which they cannot do, then that is incorrect. For example, بِالْأَمْوَاتِ If you go and ask the deceased people, deceased people clearly cannot help you. Deceased people clearly cannot help you. They cannot hear you, they cannot aid you, they cannot answer your supplication. That would be incorrect and impermissible. Also, people who are ghaib, people who are absent, like the example we gave, some of those people, they call upon their shaykh, and their shaykh is thousands of miles away in another country. How is he going to hear them? He can't. So that is incorrect as well. So all of this type of uh, dua that the people make to remove the harm or the difficulty that has overcome them, then it must be to Allah. And if they are making or asking somebody in creation, it has to be somebody who has the ability and can hear them and is present. As for being absent somewhere or not having the ability, then it is incorrect to do so.
So the first ayah in this chapter. قول الله تعالى ولا تدع من دون الله ما لا ينفعك ولا يضرك فإن فعلت فإنك إذا من الظالمين Do not call upon others besides Allah in that which they cannot aid you in nor harm you in. If you do that, then indeed you are from the wrongdoers, you are from those who are oppressors, you are from those who has committed an act of shirk. If you call upon others besides Allah in that which they cannot benefit you and they cannot harm you, then you are committing an act which is oppression and wrongdoing. You have transgressed, you have committed an act of shirk. So here in this ayah, uh, it comes just after, or the next ayah which comes, is وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِذُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ That if Allah was to grasp you with some harm, then nobody would be able to remove that except Allah. And if Allah wanted something good for you, then nobody would be able to stop that. There is nobody who can stop the goodness coming to you if Allah decrees goodness for you. And if Allah decrees some difficulty in the decree for you, then nobody can stop that coming to you. So you don't call upon others besides Allah to remove that or to stop that. That is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why it says here, now do not call upon others besides Allah who cannot aid you and they cannot harm you. They can't do anything for you. Do not call upon these others besides Allah in those affairs. If you do that, then indeed you are from the wrongdoers. You are from those who have oppressed and you are from those who have transgressed the boundaries. Min al-dhalimeen, meaning that you are from the mushrikeen in that case. Min al-dhalimeen, yani min al-mushrikeen. Because the greatest type of dhulm is shirk. And we mentioned that before, that dhulm is three types. Dhulm, oppression, it is three types. One type of oppression which you do between yourself and Allah, that is shirk. The second type of dhulm that you do between yourself and other people, by taking the rights of the people, lying, backbiting, stealing, beating them. And the third type of oppression is the oppression between yourself and yourself, and that is when you commit sins, and therefore put yourself or present yourself to being punished on the day of judgment. So these are the different types of dhulm, and the greatest of those is the dhulm of shirk. And that's what's meant here, that if you call upon others besides Allah, makes dua and supplication to the dead or to the peer or whoever, thinking they're going to aid you and to help you, they cannot benefit you in that affair, they cannot harm you in that affair. So if you do that, you will be from the people who have committed shirk, from the mushrikeen. And that's why in the very next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِذُرْ If you are overcome by some hardship in the decree, something happens, you lose your wealth, you lose your health, you lose someone in your family, whatever the affair may be, some difficulty overcomes you. فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ Then nobody will be able to remove this difficulty that has overcome you. Except Allah. So you don't rely upon other people, you don't depend upon other people, you don't go as the people, the ignorant ones say, go to the imam, he'll make dua, he'll wipe over you, you'll be okay. You don't do these types of things, your dependence and your trust is in Allah. If some hardship has come to you, then you're patient, and you make dua to Allah to remove that hardship, and to make the affair and the situation easier, to make the difficulty to be removed. Then that dua is made directly to Allah, and you do not, call upon others, whether maybe it is some illness that overcomes you. Maybe there might be a time in your life you're overcome by some illness, by some disease, and you're ill and your body is weak. That difficulty is not going to be removed by this person or that person, even the doctor and the medicine. Your trust isn't in the doctor and the medicine. You don't depend upon the doctor and the medicine when you're ill. You still depend upon Allah to cure you. Because if, it, if Allah does not cure you, then the doctor and these medicines will not cure you. These are only a means to it. The doctor and the medicine and all these things are a means. So you go to the doctor and you take the medicine, you do that. But you don't depend on the medicine and depend on the doctor. 
You depend upon Allah, you put your trust in Allah that these uh, doctors and these medicines, inshallah, by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah, they will be able to aid you or you by taking them will be good for you. But the cure is from Allah. So a person always has his trust completely in Allah. If any harm overcomes you, it's not going to be removed by this dead person or that dead person or by this great imam as they claim or that great imam as they claim. Give him money, do this, do that, he'll wipe over you. Rather, if that occurs, then it is only Allah who will be able to remove this difficulty. <coughs> Similarly, Allah says, وَإِن يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّهِ لِفَضْلِهِ And similarly, if Allah decrees some good for you, if Allah wants some goodness to come to you, then nobody will be able to stop that goodness coming to you. If Allah wants some goodness for you, then no person will be able to stop that goodness coming to you. Nobody will be able to block that goodness coming to you. So the others, they do not have any power or ability in these affairs. Your trust is purely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these affairs. And that's why Allah said in the Quran in another ayah, قُلِ دُعُوا الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِن دُونِهِ فَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ كَشْفَ الضُّرِّ عَنْكُمْ وَلَا تَحْوِيلًا Say, call upon those who you claimed besides Allah, those who you claimed could help you, etc. Besides Allah, call upon them. They do not control any ability to be able to remove the harm from you. If some harm or some hardship is uh, decreed for you, then all of these others, they do not have any ability to remove that harm from you or to change that away from you. And that's why it says also, قُلْ أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Look, uh, Say, can you see, do you see what you are calling upon besides Allah? إِنْ أَرَادَنِيَ اللَّهُ بِذُرٍ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ذُرٍ if Allah wanted some harm for me, some difficulty in the decree for me, then look at these things you're calling upon besides Allah. Would they be able to remove that difficulty if Allah decreed it for me? Oh, aradani bi rahmatin, hal hunna mumsikatu rahmati. Or if Allah wanted some goodness, some mercy for me, all these other things that you're calling upon, the graves, the shrines and whatever, would any of them be able to stop this mercy and this goodness coming to me if Allah decreed it for me? قُلْ حَسْبِيَ Allah. Allah says in the Qur'an, say, Allah is sufficient for me. حَسْبِيَ Allah. وَعَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكَّلُ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ Upon Allah, the people of dependence and trust put their trust in Allah. The believers put their trust in Allah, and they do not put their trust into any of these other deities or whatever it may be. That's why, it's mentioned in another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكْ Have knowledge, know, that if all of the people got together to do something good for you, they would not be able to if Allah hadn't decreed it. If Allah doesn't decree that good to happen to you, then if all of the people got together to try and do this good for you, they wouldn't be able to. If Allah didn't decree it to happen, and in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, it also says, وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ And if all of the people got together to harm you, to do some wrong to you, all of them got together and they all make the plan to do something bad to you, they wouldn't be able to if Allah hadn't decreed that to happen to you. So that is not in the control of others. It is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَالنَّفْعُ وَالضَّرَرْ إِنَّمَا هُوَ مِنَ اللَّهِ So the goodness, the benefit and the hardship and the harm, whatever the affair may be, all of that is the decree of Allah, all of that is from Allah. فَهُوَ الَّذِي يَسْتَحِقُّ أَنْ يُدْعَى لِطَلَبِ الْخَيْرِ وَيُدْعَى أَيْضًا لِرَفْعِ الشَّرِّ So if that is the case, that this is all the decree of Allah, any good that comes to you, any harm, any difficulty, any hardship, it's all from the decree of Allah. Then in that case, whatever your situation, your dua should therefore obviously always be just to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
because that is where the decree, the decree is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He is the one who controls all of that. Nobody in creation controls any of that. لا تملكه جميع المخلوقات uh, Nobody in creation controls any of that. Then the next ayah says, فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقَ Seek your provisions and your sustenance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The full ayah is, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا Those whom you are calling upon besides Allah, they do not control any provisions or sustenance for you. Your food, your drink, your clothes, your homes, all of these blessings you've been given. Say, Allah says, say all of these, or rather, indeed all of these who you are calling upon besides Allah, all of these false deities, all of these graves and these shrines and these statues, all of these whom you are calling upon besides Allah, they do not control any provisions for you, any sustenance for you. They can't give you any of that. فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقِ Therefore, seek your provisions and your sustenance from Allah. وَعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ And worship Him, Allah alone. And thank Him and show your gratitude to Him. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ To Him you will return. To Him you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also exactly the same as what Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his people. Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his people as it is mentioned in the Quran. وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ اُعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَاتَّقُوهُ Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his people. He said to his people, worship Allah upon Tawheed. وَاتَّقُوهُ And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعَلَمُونَ That is what is best for you if you only knew. Worship Allah alone and fear Him. إِنَّمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْثَانًا وَتَخْلُقُونَ إِفْكَا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقَ وَاعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهِ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ All of these that you worship besides Allah, these idols, and you make up all these fabrications and lies. Indeed, all of these whom you worship besides Allah, they do not control your sustenance or your provisions. So seek your sustenance, your provisions from Allah, and worship Him and thank Him. To Him you will return. This is what is mentioned regarding Ibrahim alayhi salam. Saying to his people. So we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is a razzaq. He is a razzaq. He is the one who gives the sustenance and the provisions to the people. As Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ That I did not create the humans or the jinn except to worship me. I do not want from them any provisions. I do not want from them any uh, food to feed me. Inna Allah huwa razzaq Indeed, Allah, He is the razzaq He is the one who gives the provisions and the sustenance to the people, to His slaves, to the servants, to His creation. He is the one who provides the provision for them. Inna Allah huwa razzaq dhu al-quwwati al then in another ayah of the Quran, Allah also says, أَمَّنْ هَذَا الَّذِي يَرْزُقُكُمْ إِنْ أَمْسَكَ رِزْقَهُ Who is this? Who is the one who will give you anything, provisions and sustenance, if he stops that from you? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented the rain, if Allah stopped the rain coming from the sky, if Allah prevented the rain coming from the sky, Allah stopped that provision. Then if all of the people got together with all of their science, with all of their technology, they would not be able to make it rain. If Allah prevented that rain and stopped that rain from coming, then the people would not be able to make that rain to come. So all of this provision and all of this sustenance, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in the ayah it says, فَبْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقِ Seek your provisions, your sustenance. Your food, your water, your, your, your provisions. Seek them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Because indeed Allah is near. And He answers the dua of the one who calls upon Him. So do not call upon the deceased in their graves, or the fear, or the awliya, as they say. Don't put your trust and dependence in them, but put your trust and dependence in Allah alone. And this is the reality of the religion of the prophets and the messengers, the religion of Tawheed, that all of your trust and your dependence is purely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُولَهُ Worship Him and thank Him. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings. And that is what's mentioned in the Qur'an. And that is what's mentioned uh, by the scholars, that thanking the blessings that you have been given, thanking Allah for the blessings that you've been given, showing your gratitude to Allah for the blessings you've been given, then that is one of the means for the blessings to continue. But if you are ungrateful for the blessings you've been given, you've been given money, you've been given clothes, you've been given food, you have all of these things, yet you do not show your gratitude to Allah by not worshipping Allah, you abandon the worship of Allah, you abandon your five prayers, you don't bother even making five prayers a day, you abandon the worship to Allah, then this could be a means to the blessings stopping. This could be a means to the blessings stopping. But if you persist and continue upon the worship of Allah, consistently, as we said, Ibrahim alayhi salam, one of his characteristics was, that he was regular upon the worship of Allah, if you are in that way, then this is a sign that you are grateful to Allah and you are thanking Allah for the blessings. How do you thank Allah for the blessings? By worshipping Him and obeying Him. Then after that, the next ayah, وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah says, who is more misguided? Who is more misguided than the one who calls upon others besides Allah, and they will not answer to him all the way till the day of judgment. He can carry on calling upon these deceased in their graves till the day of judgment, they wouldn't be able to answer his dua. They wouldn't listen to his dua, they wouldn't answer his dua. These statues and idols, the people can carry on calling upon them till the day of judgment, they will not be able to give them anything. So Allah says, who is more misguided than the one who calls upon these others besides Allah, and they will not answer his dua up to the day of judgment. They will not answer his dua. They will not listen to him. They will not answer his dua. So this is what's mentioned regarding the ill state, the behavior of the people. The ill state and the incorrect state of the people on their misguidance, calling upon others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these others do not hear them. They do not answer their dua, they do not give them their uh, requirements, and that shows the level of the misguidance that they are upon. And this is like what we mentioned before, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, that some people, they used to go to the graveyards, and they used to call upon the deceased in the graveyards. They used to call upon the deceased in the graveyards. And the deceased, they used to come up, the spirits used to rise up from the graves, and they used to talk to these people who were making dua to them, and they would go and answer their dua. However, that was not actually the deceased people in their graves. They were more concerned about the barzakh and what was going on in there. The spirits that were rising up were jinn, shayateen, coming and taking the appearance of the person in the grave, because the jinn, the shayateen, they can take different appearances. So they would take upon themselves the appearance of the person in the grave. So they rise up in that appearance, and this person recognizes, that's him, he's the one in the grave, look, looks exactly like him. And so it's actually the jinn and the shayateen who used to come up to confuse and to misguide these people even more. Because then they will say, yes, last night he came up out of his grave and he spoke to me. This great peer or the great wali of Allah, he rose up out of his grave. But actually it was the shayateen and the jinn doing that as a test upon these people. Allah allows that to occur, and they are misguided even further uh, upon that. Uh, next ayah then says, وَقَوْلُهُ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ Who is the one who answers the dua of the one who is mutar? The mutar is a person who is in need. A person who is in 
a difficult situation, a person who is in need, then Allah is the one who answers the dua of that type of person in that difficult and needy situation. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ Who is the one who will answer to the mutar? The one in that restricted and difficult and constrained situation? It will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ Who will answer to the call of the one who has been afflicted by some difficulty? This is a question. Who will answer the call of the one who is afflicted by difficulty? But this question is a refutation of the mushrikeen. It is to refute the mushrikeen because the answer is obvious. The answer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question is put down in this way as a rebuttal of the mushrikeen. Who will answer the call of the one who is in difficulty? And they all know the answer. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, he is the one who will answer the dua of the one in difficulty and in hardship. وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ and he is the one who will remove the evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will answer the dua of a person in difficulty and remove any evil that has overcome that person. Then in the next section, Allah also mentions in a part of the Qur'an uh, or in the hadith, the hadith which comes next, the hadith which At-Tabarani narrated أَنَّهُ كَانَ فِي زَمَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رَجُلٌ مُنَافِقٌ يُؤْذِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That at the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, there was a munafiq, a hypocrite, who used to harm the believers. He used to do bad things to the believers. فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ So some of the people, the believers, they said, قُومُوا بِنَا نَسْتَغِيثُ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مِنْ هَذَا الْمُنَافِقِ they said, come, get up. Let's go to the Prophet ﷺ and ask him for his help to stop this munafiq from harming us and doing bad to us. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم, So when the Prophet ﷺ realized this, that they said, we want to come and ask you that uh, we've come to seek your assistance and aid, al-istighatha. He said, إِنَّهُ لَا يُسْتَغَاثُ بِي وَإِنَّمَا يُسْتَغَاثُ بِاللَّهِ that it is not I who you seek the aid and assistance in. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who you aid, who you seek the aid and the assistance in. In this situation though, was it not possible for the Prophet ﷺ to have helped, to have aided in that situation? It's possible. And we said before that if it's possible and the person is alive, it's allowed to go and ask. So here, it's correct. It was allowed to go and ask the Prophet ﷺ. It was. He's alive. He can answer them. He can help them. It's allowed. So why did the Prophet ﷺ reply in that way saying, you do not seek that in me. You seek that in Allah. Even though in this situation, in that context, that type is allowed. It was in order to highlight to them the phrase that they had used the terminology that they had used to highlight to them the importance of Tawheed. Because they said that we will do the istighatha from the Prophet ﷺ. Istighatha in the Arabic language will go and seek this aid and assistance to remove the harm. The Prophet ﷺ didn't like that this type of phrase should be used for him. That they're going to seek aid and assistance from the Prophet ﷺ to remove the harm. He didn't want that terminology associated to him. He wanted that terminology to only be used for Allah. That we will seek aid and assistance to remove the harm in Allah. Not to use those phrases for a person. So he said this to them. That this type of phrase, you don't say it for me. Don't say that we will do istighatha with the Prophet ﷺ. Rather the istighatha is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he said, إِنَّهُ لَا يُسْتَغَاثُ بِي That you do not seek the istighatha in me, even though in this situation, like we said, it was permissible. Because he's alive and he can hear them and he can aid them. But the reason why he told them was so that uh, it does not lead on to other things. People don't hear this from them saying, we're going to go do istighatha with the Prophet ﷺ. And then people maybe take one step to the next step and one thing leads to another. And they start coming and asking for things which are not in the control of the Prophet 
And then that would be impermissible. It would be a, a type of shirk then to ask for something which is outside the capability of creation. So he wanted to stop opening this door to the people and people then leading one thing to another, one thing to another, until it became something impermissible they began to ask for. So even though the actual situation that was permissible for them to ask that, the manner in which it occurred and the phrase that they used, the Prophet ﷺ did not uh, desire to that, uh, for that to occur, to block any possibility of that leading on to any haram occurring afterwards. It could be that there's another explanation. And the other explanation is, uh, that the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, how did the believers used to behave towards the hypocrites? How did the Prophet ﷺ used to behave towards the hypocrites? The hypocrites, they used to get the treatment as Muslims. The hypocrites, they were pretending. So on the apparent, from what you saw, they were Muslims. They used to go to the mosque. They even used to go out to jihad. They used to be with the Muslims pretending to be Muslims. So the way that they were treated was as if they are Muslim. Their end result will be with Allah. They'll get the punishment then. In the munafiqeen of dark al asfali min al nar, the munafiqeen will be in the lowest pits of the hellfire. But here, typically, generally, they were behaved towards as if they are Muslims then, because that's what they were apparently showing. So it could be that the Prophet ﷺ meant that in this instance, I am not capable of helping you in this affair. Because we don't know that this man is a munafiq or not. So this type of situation, you should only make your uh, dua to Allah. You should only seek the aid and assistance in Allah in this person. Because if he's on hypocrisy or not on hypocrisy, munafiq, not munafiq, those things, they are not clear to us. But in any case, then that type of terminology, the Prophet ﷺ did not like it. Because this terminology then, it should only be used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the aid and the assistance in Allah not seeking the aid and the assistance in others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the end of that chapter. Next week we'll carry on with the next chapter, which is the chapter which carries on from this type of topic, which is calling upon others, making dua to others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how Allah refutes that in the Qur'an. And also the narration regarding the battle of Uhud, when the Prophet ﷺ was injured in the battle of Uhud, uh, when some of his teeth were uh, broken and injured in the battle of Uhud, that we will also discuss next week, inshaAllah ta'ala, at uh, 8 p.m. So we'll conclude upon that today.